Welcome back, my duelist friends. Casual Duelist here. We've got another wonderful week of decks for you guys. This week, we're going to be centering in on heroes. Um, good place to start, Destiny Heroes. We are going to show you guys how to juggle a deck based around... Well, it's going to be a casual deck, but it's still going to be a deck built around Destiny Hero Dangerous. Because honestly, he's got a great effect and does a lot of really cool, fun stuff for it. Um, so today's deck is... I, I say casual. It's going to follow the ban list, but it is a 30-card build. So this is really just for fun and just to have fun. So first things first, we're going to talk skill cards. We're going to be going with Christine and the Fusion Party skill. Activate this once during your main phase, once per duel. You can, uh, you can Fusion Summon one Fusion Monster from your extra deck using cards from the hand and field as Fusion Material. I do believe this was errated. It should be discard a card. Uh, to do this. So just remember that. You'll be fine. Uh, fusion Party, good skill. So we're using that. And then we're going to jump straight into the Destiny Boys. Or, yeah, Destiny Boys. So first and foremost, we're going to be using two copies of Blade Master. Blade Master on his own, not super impressive. Three star, 300 by 600. Little baby warrior. Uh, during the opponent's battle phase, as a quick effect... You can discard this and all your Destiny Hero monsters currently controlled gain 800 until the end of this turn. So it is a good surprise tactic. He's better to be saved in the hand as a response during our opponent's turn than he is um, because we can't just kind of pump him during our own turn. Uh, but this is all fine and well. 800 goes a long way, especially once we've met into our boss monster. Next, two copies of Dasher. Uh, Dasher's just a good card in general. 21 by 1,000. He's got the 6-star rating. Uh, least searchable hero in this build. Uh, once per turn, you can tribute another monster card. This card will gain a 1,000 attack until the end of the turn. If this card does attack, it changes the defense position at the end of the battle phase. Um, once while this card is in the graveyard, when you draw a monster during your draw phase... You may reveal that monster card and special summon it. This card, however, must remain in the graveyard to both activate and to resolve this effect. So I do believe DD Crow is currently in this format of the game. So that's like one thing that could actually disrupt this play. Um, but it's just say it's good. And in the later game, it gets a little bit better. It is what it is. One of the heaviest hitters in this build is going to be the Destiny Hero Diamond Dude. We are going to go ahead and run him in a full playset. Uh, the effect, once per turn, you may excavate the top card of your deck. If it happens to be a normal spell card, send it to the graveyard. Otherwise, bottom of the deck. Uh, during the main phase of your next turn, you may activate the effect of the spell in your graveyard, uh, even if you no longer control this guy face up. So... That said, I don't know if the spell itself has to remain there that long, but this is a good way, and anybody who's played this guy in any of the normal formats, traditional, advanced, uh, anything else, um, you guys will be familiar that uh, we do not pay costs to cards. This is going to matter in a little bit. We'll get to it when we get into the spells. But any spell card, if it has a cost, he doesn't have to pay it. So, like, trade-in, it's a free draw to, destiny draw, free draw to, stuff like that, uh, stuff of that nature. Um, he just doesn't have to pay. Um, of course, those cards are not currently here, so not too much to worry about. I do only play a single copy of Doom Lord in this build. Um, he's very techy. We can snatch him out of the deck with the reinforcement of the army at any point in time. Which is, again, another card that we can go ahead and activate with the Destiny Hero Diamond Dude. And this guy's actually got a cool trigger effect. Uh, sometimes I like to throw him in a sideboard. Today's main deck. Uh, once per turn, target one monster the opponent controls. Banish said target. You cannot declare an attack the turn that you activate this effect. You must control the face-up attack position card to activate the and resolve the effect. Banished monster returns to opponent's field during the second standby after activation. Um, just real quick, everybody's probably got him. Get a D6 and, uh, you know, just kind of count up the effect. Maybe put the put that on the card that got banished. This way you guys remember. Uh, again, you guys can put a couple coins on there. Whatever you got laying around will work. Uh, Doom Lord, kind of good. He's not very strong. 600 by 800. 
So again, like I said, Diamond Dude is really kind of like your main boy here. And it's a good thing you got Captain, uh, the Blade. Was it Blade Captain? Blade Master. Because um, that's going to jump him up to 22 when he gets swung at. So again, kind of cool, kind of fun. There's one other he hero that like we got to talk about when we're talking Destiny. We got to talk about Destiny Hero Malicious. Malicious in this format is not restricted. I believe in current advanced format, he's looking at the ban list at two. Because again, between Link, Xyz, and sometimes Synchro plays, this guy just gets abused because he really is that guy. He's just good. Um, at any point while he's in the discard pile, you may banish a copy of him to special summon another copy of him from the deck. And we're going to make this super easy. So when we we're playing the fusion party, one of the beautiful things that we could do, we can discard a copy um, to go ahead and get the party going and fuse two other cards. And then you can banish that and suddenly you've already got two monsters on the field. Or he could be one of the monsters that you're using to fuse. And again, still pop him off at the end of that. Um, it's really easy, really fun, and uh, he does a good job. So going into the spells... The, the first three are like the normal three you guys see from me. Two Books of Moon and a Cosmic Cyclone. Um, again, this takes care of our three ofs restrictions. Um, it's good stuff cards. Again, double, uh, doubling up on the book because, again, we can play extra Night Beams uh, for extra back row. Um, but the Book of Moon is really going to help keep our boys safe while we're playing. Um, we are going to lean into the fun aspect this time we're going to play three copies of dark city now you could you could take these out when you guys are playing for more competitive reasons or you can lower the number either way good card works like skyscraper does for the elemental heroes but just for the uh destiny boys so if a destiny hero attacks a monster that has a higher attack value then the destiny hero will gain a thousand attack during damage calculation and again this this spikes cards like diamond dude up to 24 uh, a Dasher gets up to a nat 31, could go up to 41 with his ability. Um, even Doom Lord gets up to like 18 or 16 or whatever it was. Good stuff. I uh, got a single copy of Night Beam because you do want to take care of the back row. I'm pocketing two copies of Polymerization in the main build. And again, like the same way I said you could remove the Dark Cities, you could remove the Polymerizations and just change the extra deck a little bit. Right now, I want to be able to play as many copies of Dangerous as possible because he's fun. Uh, so again, double polymerization. You can double up on his effects. Uh, two copies, Reinforcement of the Army. Good stuff, great stuff. Uh, three copies, Tribute to the Doomed. So Tribute to the Doomed in this casual format is helping us because, number one, Diamond Dude effect. We don't have to discard a card when we activate it off of Diamond Dude. Um, two... You're going to have extra copies of Dark City in your hand while playing casually anyway. Might as well get something for that and be able to toss those Dark Cities. Same things with the Polymerizations. You're not always going to want to fuse to do stuff. Every now and again, you might actually find it advantageous to go Tribute to the Doomed, get Malicious out of your hand, to board a copy of Malicious um, while still getting off the effect of Tribute. Um, there's a lot that you can do with this spell card in this deck, and uh, it just works. Uh, traps, again, we are going to be using a couple copies of D-Chain, the Destiny Chain. Um, so again, cool card. Target a Destiny Hero Monster you control. Equip this card to it. The equipped monster gains 500. This is already good. This already takes like Diamond Dude up to a nice sturdy 19. Um, the next part is the part that makes it cool. If the equipped monster destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard... We get to do an extra 500 burn damage off the D-Chain, and that is actually good. That is something crazy, like Destiny Heroes getting to do some direct damage is good. Uh, again, speed dual format, you only start with 4,000 hit points. So every little chip that you can do, especially when you're playing a big, big board, uh, big deck, uh, you know, these little things help. Next up, two copies of D-Counter probably one of the craziest traps they have uh when a face-up destiny hero monster you control is targeted for an attack just to simply destroy the attacking monster so for those of you who played back in whatever it was labyrinth of nightmare i think and sakuretsu armor was invented um we have that we have an optional sakuretsu armor 
for the Destiny Heroes. It's in Speed Duel. And again, so like, you might be able to get two monsters out. But can you get a monster out that's bigger than me when I'm doing this? Plus, we have the Blade, Blade Master and everything else. And then just to round it out to 30, a single jar of Avarice. Um, sometimes you just want to keep the shenanigans going. Um, this will allow you to freely use Malicious um, and uh, just kind of do some stuff. So like if you ended up having to discard like two of them, you can kind of put them both back in your deck. Maybe trigger off the third one then. Um, some, some bad draws are going to happen. But the additional part is it is any five cards. You target five cards in the graveyard except cards named Jar of Avarice. And you shuffle all five into the deck to draw one. You can only activate one of these per turn, but it is an amazing thing. It's going to let you set up and recycle. And this deck could go through a lot of stuff real quick. So that is the main deck. Again, this is a casual build, so maybe this isn't for everybody. But if it's for you, go ahead, screenshot, screen cap, uh, pause and make some notes. I'll be back with the rest of this stuff here in just a moment. All right. Now, I'm going to start with the rest of the side deck before I get to the extra deck because it's kind of basic. So in the side deck, I do keep an extra copy of Nightbeam because, again, if we ran through the deck and we talked about things that could trigger off of Diamond Dude, we would be talking about being able to get Nightbeam, start your turn by being able to bap an opponent's uh, back row. Uh, polymerization, start with a fusion. Uh, reinforcement of the army, you could start with an extra search on top of your draw or tribute to the doomed and start your turn with a blind destruction of one of your opponent's monsters, your choice. Uh, the extra night beam just sort of helps sometimes. Um, you guys could sub this for anything you want. Um, two copies Lost Wind. Um, I was going to make a joke about, haha, it wasn't lost on me, but like, serious, serious. This is actually going to help. A lot of your monsters are scaled down. This is going to have the original attack value of a special summon monster while ripping the effects off of it. Um, so just in case your opponent is playing anything similar or anything with an extra deck, this is really going to come in handy. Plus, you can use it twice. If they do play one from the extra deck while it's in the graveyard, it resets itself to the field. Uh, good card, great card is always Mind Crush. Um, maybe a little less valuable in a casual game like this. At which point you guys could trade this for anything else that you guys want to play. Um, and then last but not least, Waking the Dragon 2. Again, we will have a couple non-Destiny hero cards in here. And because of that, Waking the Dragon is going to come in handy, summoning those cards out of our extra deck as well. Um, again, good card, great card. Allows us to play big powerhouses like our boy Blue Eyes Ultimate or the Ojama King. And again, these are the only two off-brand characters. Um, basically stating, like, it's hard for your opponent to play Yu-Gi-Oh! if there's no field zones for them to put their monsters into. And it's even harder to come up against the strongest monster in the game right now. Um, additionally, one that we can play because Waking the Dragon is in here. We can play the Destiny and Dragoon. Destiny and Dragoon doing some stuff for us. So, like, let's, let's get a real good look, right? So normally this is Plasma and Dogma. So fusion, is, is a fusion summon of this card can only be done with the above materials. However, it doesn't say this can only be fusion summoned. So this is how we get the special summon off the Waking the Dragons. Additionally, once per turn, target a monster the opponent controls. Destroy that target. If it was face up, inflict damage to the opponent equal to the attack that it had while it was face up. Uh, sorry. And then, yeah, when it had one, it was on the field. You cannot conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this. Uh, once per turn during your standby phase, if this is in the graveyard, you may banish a destiny hero from the graveyard to special summon it. Now, rules lawyers out there, I'm not 100% sure because I'm playing destiny, destiny heroes. Can I, can we as a community, can we play this back from the graveyard by its own effect, even though it wasn't fusion summoned because of waking the dragons? Let us all know down there in the comment section, okay? The last card we're going to play, we're going to play three pack of Dangerous. And we need to talk about him and why he's so darn good. So it's any Destiny Hero monster plus any Dark Effect monster. So in this deck, any two monsters. Um, quick Effect, so we can do this during both players' turns. Discard one card. Send one Destiny Hero from hand or deck to grave. And if do, Destiny Heroes we control gain 200 per Destiny Hero already in grave until end of turn. 
use this once per turn. And it is in quotes. So you're not going to be playing two copies of Dangerous Effect every turn, but you can get Dangerous and you can get Blade Master in the same turn. You could do these both defensively during the opponent's turn, and you still have things like the Destiny Chain, the D Chain, and the D Counter, just straight up do destructions. Um, it's got some crazy stuff, but this is really the other reason why casually we can play the 30 card limit is because, again, remember, it says discard a card and then send. So there's two cards that have to go, and it's another good way to set up Destiny Hero Malicious. Um, you can go ahead, you can get rid of another copy of the Dark City, um, pop out Malicious, gain the extra points, or you could drop one hero to drop another out of deck. That's an immediate two cards, not to count the two cards you used to put it together, not to count if you used the Blade Master first. If you did all that, you would get an extra 1800 during the opponent's turn. So again, that should be a lot enough, uh, should be a decent chunk of power for you to give your cards uh, for a nice good counter punch, which is again, why I think this is a fun build. That's why I wanted to start the week with this. I've got some evil heroes coming up next. I'm going to kind of do like a little tech thing. And uh, at the end of the week, I know I hyped up the techie flame wingman. We'll get there. I promise, Mokuba. But we were given another kind of request, and it was to see if we can't do an OTK with Mariner. So we're going to try to do an OTK with Mariner this Friday. So that sounds good to you guys. Keep coming back. We'll be here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, for the foreseeable future, usually a spotlight on the Sunday. Um, that seems to be the new schedule. We're going to try to run with it as long as we can. Um, this gives us some extra days. So like when the new starter deck comes out later this month, we'll be able to take some of the in-between days to cover it. Um, but for now, guys, I hope that you uh, all enjoyed this. If you have, consider supporting the channel. A lot of you do. You guys have all done the like, the comments, the sub. Some of you have gone above and beyond with the buy me a coffee again. I'm looking at you, Adam Mokuba. Thank you. It was uh, much appreciated. And it's going to go towards buying the starter deck at the end of this month. And uh, guys, even if you don't do any of that stuff, do me one, one favor, just one. Go out. Have a great day today. Go do something that you need to go do. Go do something that you want to do. And uh, just make the best out of it, okay? Let's start this week off great. And hopefully we'll end the same way. Till then, see you next time.